the fuck is up, my britches? If you are new here, hello, my name is Brittany. I almost forgot I had to clap in the beginning of my videos. Today we're just doing a little chitty chat. Get ready with me because I was going to put makeup on. I'm going to be out of commission for the next few days. I'm getting a wisdom tooth pulled. So I'm like, let's do a get ready with me. Let's try new makeup, some old makeup. And then I got an Instagram this morning. <laughs> and... Becca Cosmetics is going to be closing. And I asked you guys on Instagram, what was everybody's thoughts? <laughs> and I was getting responses. I'm like, you know what? Let's do a little chitty chat. Get ready with me. I was watching Samantha Ravindel's video earlier. And it was just interesting conversation amongst her live. I'm, I'm pretty sure she's going to take it down. She usually does live streams and then just deletes them after. But in the event that hers is still up after, I will link it for you guys. If you guys want to watch it, because I really loved just the feedback that she had as also a brand owner in the beauty industry, because I own my own businesses, but obviously my businesses are not in the beauty industry, but I'm always curious to see what you guys have to say about things. So then what a better topic, I guess, to start with. And then this will probably get beyond that based on like what you guys come at me with, with your guys' thoughts and opinions. I'm going to use some YSL. Why I keep doing that. YSL. It's LYS Beauty. I'm going to use some of those products today, but I'm going to kick it old school and I'm pulling in some Becca products today for shits and gigs because my feelings on this whole thing, I'm just going to get into doing my makeup. I personally have always thought Becca had incredible quality products, especially their powders, like face powders, bronzers, highlighters, blushes were some of the top in my collection. So much so that I still have a lot of my collection from Becca. They just weren't really doing it for me as of recently. It seems to me like ever since they sold to Estee Lauder, I wasn't really seeing much innovation and just different types of products coming. It was almost like they just are sticking to what they know. And you know what? As far as like, because we do new makeup release videos every single Monday, and we're always talking about just our opinions on products. Not everybody's going to have the same opinions. So I would always say like, I just wish they would do something different. I feel like they've always had so much potential with the quality of their products. So it was always like, oh, I just hope, I hope they do something. And then we got the news today that they're officially going to be closing. And I was like, it's just, it's so sad to see because they are such a great brand with such great products. At least this is just my opinion. I'm using the Becca the Shimmering Skin Perfector Light in the shade Prosecco Pop. I'm just using this as like an illuminating base just on the outskirts of my face. But what are you guys thinking about everything? Like, are you guys surprised? I did get Instagram DMs back from like people's feedback. For the consensus, it seemed like a lot of people just weren't really surprised about it. And I honestly, I wasn't insanely surprised just because of I knew how I felt about the brand and I was a big fan of their products. So it's like, if I'm bored and I love their stuff, I can only imagine what like average consumers are feeling. But in the grand scheme of things, you never really know because with us, we're very in the know. We're very caught up on like the shit that's going down in the beauty industry. I feel like an average consumer aren't given two fucks about it. <laughs> so let me see what you guys are saying in the live chat. Let's see what britches are here because this is a different time. I wasn't sure if this would be a good one or not, but... Tonight, I think we're going to wing night. Usually we do on Wednesdays. Let's see. Uh, Brianna asked earlier, or am, am I using the Arctic Fox Purple Rain in my hair? I have like three or four different shades of Arctic Fox in my hair right now because I was just trying to use up the products that I had. So I know Purple Rain's in there somewhere, <laughs> but it's not like the main color. I think was it virgin pink? I think virgin pink was the main color, but I had purple rain. I have a little bit of diluter and I think one more shade. I just used my Dior concealer again. So let's see. Uh, did everyone hear Becca's going out of business and shutting down by September? Yeah, I was kind of surprised because I think a lot of people are surprised because we just talked about Monday, how they were putting out another new makeup release. So I think that's why it's so shocking. It'd be different, I think, if they weren't really doing much of anything, but it seemed like they were releasing products. I mean, pretty frequently. I do want to pull it up on Instagram. If you guys haven't seen like the post from Becca yet, I saw it 
all over. Like all the new makeup release accounts and stuff, all those types of channels or Instagram accounts were posting the response from Becca because I'm pretty sure Becca just announced it on Instagram and called it a day. But I think that was just like an interesting conversation to have because it's like, is this just the beginning of the end of makeup brands? Because the the market is so saturated right now. So let's see. Let me pull up the... Oh, I pulled up the wrong bit. <laughs> I pulled up a local photographer <laughs> instead of the Becca Cosmetics on accident. Let me pull up the post that was posted on Instagram so you guys could see if you guys didn't see it yet. So it says, an important message to our Becca beauties, glowing with gratitude. You're all... You are all our Becca family. Part of this beautiful community is the support that supports us and shares our values. It's because of our love for each other that you, of you, I can't read. You guys know this by now. <laughs> I'm horrible at reading. It's because of your love for each of, it's because of our love for each of you that we are sharing with you some now some very important news about the closing of our brand September, 2021. So on like the sidebar, it says the global pandemic has had an impact on everyone around us in the world on many levels. It has also had a tremendous impact on so many businesses, very much so. At Becca, an accumulation of challenges together with the global impact of the COVID-19 has sadly been more than our business can withstand. And we have to ha and we have had to make a heartbreaking decision to close down Becca brand at the end of September 2021. We believe in you and we believe that the beauty inside inside you is always the light that we'll share in this world. We are confident that the spirit of Becca will continue to live on through all of you. Please keep illuminating your true selves, light your own paths, and push your limits. Share positivity and light the way for others as you can make an impact on the world. Own your light in your own terms with much love and gratitude, Team Becca. So what do you guys think? Like, I don't know, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot to the bottom because of how far behind I am now. I'm very curious. <laughs> Samantha Ravindal must be losing her mind. She was live, and I was just like, <laughs> Samantha can't catch a fucking break. Every single one of her like favorite products always goes discontinued, but like she loves the under eye perfector, which fabulous product. I personally love it myself. I don't have it currently because I ran out, but I love that product. Like that's one product I want to grab before everything is gone forever. But I was sitting there like, <laughs> Samantha can't catch a fucking brick. Lauder won't skip a beat. They will roll over Becca's best products to another brand. This is unnecessary. I completely agree with that. Like, it, it sucks because, like, my main thing is it sucks for the people that are losing their jobs. And I mean, Becca is owned by Estee Lauder. So I don't doubt the fact that there will still be jobs available with Estee Lauder. Because I mean, I at least know when I worked for a bigger retailer, I was technically employed by the parent company. I was not employed by the company, like the company that was underneath the parent company. I was employed by the big motherfucker. So I'm pretty sure like the employees that they do have, I hope the fact since Estee Lauder is such a big company, I would hope that the employees would still have employment. But in the event that they don't, it's like that automatically really does fucking blow for all the people that would have just lost their job. So that's like the main thing. That was the first thing that I thought of. Like, it sucks that we're losing what I feel is a great makeup brand. But what sucks more is it's like, this is just another business that went down the fucking drain. <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck? Do I think though, that it was completely, I mean, I'm totally speculating, which isn't really fair to do. But I feel like right now with COVID and everything, that's a really almost like easy reason to fold a business or close down a business just because of how difficult it has been. I can only relate to the experiences that I've had, but running a business during the past year has been, I mean, it's always hard owning businesses, but it's been significantly harder. I couldn't even imagine what it would have been like if I had my bar open right now, just because of how things changed and how much shit you had to do differently and just the obstacles. And especially with a makeup brand, it's like they're producing stuff that expires. So it's like if they had stuff in production, like there's so many aspects that go on behind the scenes that none of us will ever see, understand. And that's where I really was liking Samantha's conversation was because she was giving like a little taste of what it's like 
as a makeup brand owner, just kind of understanding like how packaging works. And she was talking a lot about ColourPop and pretty much like basically how, remember a couple of years ago, like Marlena was saying, like, I mean, it wasn't anything for me new, but I think for a lot of people, the things that Samantha was saying, it was new for them. I remember like Marlena saying all the very similar things that what Samantha was saying a couple years ago, just because it does impact businesses so differently, especially in the beauty space. And when you're producing goods that expire and it has so many moving aspects to it. I'm mixing the LYS Beauty and I'm mixing in some Gucci so we don't have a insanely dark <laughs> complexion like we did yesterday. I encourage you guys, if you guys didn't see yesterday's video, check out that one because the cheek products were on fire. <laughs> I'm a, huge, I'm a huge fan of their highlighters. This is about all that I've tried from them. I've tried a lot. I don't have any complexion. Like my favorite thing about Becca was their powders. I felt like they really excelled. Almost like how I feel about brands like Hourglass. I just think that they really excel at the powder products. But along the way, it's like that under eye perfector was another one. I'm like, it's just a fabulous product that I felt like wasn't really touched by a lot of different brands. I do think though, like how Mrs. Unnecessary was saying earlier, like I think we'll see the products that we were loving or that were coveted from Becca. I do foresee them coming to other brands. Like I guarantee Oric does another product that's just like it. Just because that's pretty much what Samantha <laughs> did with her first products was, I mean, she just came out with products that she loved that were discontinued by other brands. And then she improved the aspects like being cruelty free and all that sort of stuff. But she also focused on having the luxury aspect of her brand as well. Makeup with Michelle is here with the beauty industry so saturated and indies brands up and coming. It is be it, yes, it has to be harder for brands to sustain their business with all that competition. I totally agree with that. And especially like indie brands are fucking killing it. But the other thing though is, oh, the backlight priming filter. Yes, I used to love that too. The other thing is, and this is where I feel like big brands are fucking it up, is indie brands are showing so much more involvement within like the beauty community. Like they're giving us that parasocial relationship. Like they're actually like reachable. Like they're responding to Instagram DMs and stuff like that. Whereas big brands, they really don't do that. And I feel like people especially since we're living our lives on the internet for the most part, especially now, it feels like people long for that. And that's where I think another aspect, like indie brands are fucking killing it. They just are. It, at least that's one thing like I like that about indie brands. I like the fact that they're, you know, they're small businesses. They're not owned by these massive companies and they're reachable. And they actually feel like, it feels like they listen to their consumers. But since the market is the way that it is. And since labs operate the way that they do, and like Samantha was talking about how, like as a business or as like a makeup brand, like you're required to order like a certain amount of items when you are a brand, like you have to have a minimum purchase offer. So for indie brands, like it makes sense, like why indie brands don't do like a ton of complexion products because it has to be so insanely expensive. And if these brands don't have investors, that's where I remember in, I think like a new makeup release as we were talking before about why indie brands I feel do eyeshadows is because you don't have that. And like eyeshadows, you have the ability to like pour them yourselves and stuff like that. Whereas brands like ColourPop, and this was an interesting aspect of her video too, was she referred to, I think the like Netflix documentary that Marlena I remember was in I forget the exact name of it I'm sure one of you guys in the live chat will remember but it was basically showing how like ColourPop is their own lab so they're able to do like quick products with limited limited purchase offers and stuff like they're basically a lab that owns the company which is smart that's smart fucking business because you're not relying on other companies to do it for you and that's why I feel like they're so successful is because they can get it like as soon as it's trending they're on it whereas other brands especially like brands that are so small like Auric for example I'm going to use that because since we're talking about Samantha like with her brand there's so many different moving parts and there's labs that she's relying on and stuff like that it just really put it into a different perspective of 
it's easy for people as consumers to just assume shit about brands when reality is we don't know a damn thing. <laughs> and then I think I have like an understanding just because I know what I deal with on a day to day owning different businesses, but I still know that it's totally different considering it's not the same type of business. So the industry absolutely matters as well. You are so right. I love the owner of LYS was in your live last night. That shows a lot of, <laughs> yes, it does that they are actively reaching out for feedback. I totally agree. I agree, Leticia. They definitely should have had more range in their shades of products. And that's, yeah, it's like, there's definitely valid arguments. I'm trying to see what Leticia had said. Leticia, I still got to go to the fucking post office and send out your <laughs> send out your uh, package. As someone with a darker skin tone, I always feel like they release such light face palettes. 100%. Like even the Chrissy Teigen palette, I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> but I mean, it's... It's definitely one of those things. I think that's just something that comes with like listening to your consumers. And I think that's why people feel the way that they feel about Hourglass. It's like people are consistently saying shit. And if we feel like they're not listening, whereas if that was an indie brand, we would, I feel like they were listening better because they're more reachable. You know what I mean? Um, if a small business can stay in touch, there's no excuse for big brands with big staffs, 100%. I don't even know if it's just like one of those things where it's just like a lack of, I don't know, you would think like they would have a PR person, like a social media manager, like you would think there would be a dedicated person for that. But as I mean, maybe there was, maybe they dropped the ball. That's along with one of the aspects of it's easy for us to like assume, but the reality is we don't actually know. <laughs> That makes sense because ColourPop has new releases every two seconds. Oh, the documentary name is Broken. I think that gave me a really good insight. And I mean, I could be, I could be like uh, favorable towards like Makeup Geek, but even look at, look at what happened with Makeup Geek. And I think this is one thing that I always really liked about like Marlena and everything. It's like, even look at what happened with Makeup Geek when the collaboration with Jaclyn Hill fell through. And that was another conversation that um, Samantha was saying in her live was people were asking like if she would ever collab with influencers and stuff. It's like not every brand needs to do the same thing. Like maybe brands need to start doing things a little bit differently because I mean, the influencer collabs and everything are really nice and cool to see, but it's like, now it's like trendy. So I was kind of surprised that people asked that because like me personally, I'm like, I look at collabs as like, for the most part, it's cool, especially for like a newer brand or something like that. But I don't feel like every company needs to do brand collabs. But like going back to the whole Makeup Geek thing, it's like, it was very public that that costed the company a million dollars, like that whole ordeal. And it's like, that could so quickly cripple a company. You, you know what I mean? How they were able to carry on after that, that's kind of something that it just stands out in your mind of maybe things are handled just incorrectly behind the scenes. Like, I don't know. It just, it all comes down to, there's so many layers that go into owning businesses and stuff that people just don't understand. And people are just so quick to either like cancel culture is fucking huge now. And it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's been crazy. It's been crazy comparing like what it is like now versus what it's like <laughs> before. Oh, let's see. Even with, even when they released the Chloe, yeah. Oh my God. I forgot about those palettes. It just seemed like they were always launching like the same things over and over. Like there was really no creativity behind it. And I feel like that was what they were lacking. That's why I always would say like, I love their products, but they need to do something different was because of that aspect of it. But then again, Samantha brought up a great point of sometimes brands, especially since like I was saying earlier with just being in the know and really heavily into YouTube and everything. Like we know what's going on. We know what's already on the market, but like an average consumer might not recognize that. So it's like, I think I even said that on Monday. It's like, if they keep doing it, it must be doing something right. And then it also comes down to two. This is another Becca product. It's like, 
I'm at the point, I'm like, if I just don't like something, or even if I, I don't know, it's like, I just buy things because I like them, or I like the brand, or whatever the case is. Oh, that's so pretty. I haven't used this in a minute. I'm such a fan of liquid highlights right now. I'm using that Prosecco Pop skin, Shimmering Skin Perfector Liquid. I also saw a lot of people asking on, I'm basically like going off of Samantha's chat, just talking about it. But, um, oh shit, what were people, I just had it on the tip of my tongue, fuck. People kept asking like when she's gonna come out with an under eye perfector. <laughs> Oh shit, there was one other thing I kept seeing people asking. If it comes back to me, I'll make sure I touch on it. God dang it. Oh, what did it see? Hourglass will be on the chopping block very soon, in my humble. When you guys say I M H O, do you mean in my humble opinion or in my honest opinion? Because when I read it, because I say in my humble opinion all the time, <laughs> that's how I read it. It depends. Like, I think it's, I don't, like, I think I look at it this way because I was not expecting to see Becca going out of business. Like, even with, even with their, you know, not so desirable launches, I still was not expecting them. So it's like, if it's happening to them, like, who else could it happen to? You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't really want to speculate a ton on, like, brands that I think are going to go out of business. I think... I think it's definitely increasing, increasingly more and more difficult to be a brand these days, just because people are going to bitch about something no matter what. <laughs> and I feel like the whole like accountability aspect and cancel culture, like I said, like that, it's had like an all time high. Not that Becca had any of those issues, but it's like literally anything can be the cause of a business to go out of business. Oh, let's see. Cam came out the gate. Oh, Sam came out of the gate innovative. I would imagine she would not follow, com but she did like she flat out said like she made products that I, I don't feel like what she made was innovative. I think she took products that were basically already on the market and just made her own twist on it, which I can respect that because at least it wasn't like a blatant copy, but like I could look at the smoke reflect and immediately think of the Tom Ford. I could look at the Glow Loss and immediately think of the sh the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Both are products that I know that she loves. So it's like, I still feel like there was some things, like I don't feel like it was something so creative, but I feel like she just took it, made improvements on the aspects that she liked. And that's more or less like what a smart business person would do. Like when I complain about Makeup Revolution and even like Ace Butte, I'm like, I hate the, f I think it's Ace Butte. No, I don't think that is. It's the brand that always basically duplicates the Natasha Denona palettes. Like, I just don't like that because it's like, it's one thing to gain inspiration for something, but you have to change it at least somehow to make it not seem like you're blatantly just copying. That's the, the aspect that I have, or the, that's the opinion that I have. That's just stuff that I don't like. Oh, uh, let's see. I'm seeing what, oh, Mo said she agrees with Hourglass. I mean, people are definitely standing up a lot more now. The black was it the black dollar could have the black dollar could have come in clutch if they had expanded the chain range of a new face palette. I definitely wish that they had one hundred percent. Maybe they will return a total rebrand and all hot new shit under new management. That was another. I can't lie because I love a good conspiracy theory. <laughs> I can't lie because of how many people are talking about it, and it's like it's so like shocking that it's like. Is it like, is this like a publicity stunt? Is it like, I mean, it's smart, especially like other brands should be paying attention because it's like, people are just like, oh my God, I love this product. Oh my God, I love this product. You know damn well that you're going to see these products come back up. You, you just know it. I feel that way. Uh, the highlight is super pretty. Yes. Some people putting the brakes on being different within the brand culture. Oh, we don't do it that way. We don't listen to the innovation. Yeah. And I'm, I mean... I don't feel like every brand needs to be like super innovative, but like a launch from time to time, like, can we get something that's just a little bit different? That's, that's how I feel about it. Unfortunately, Hourglass will never have their customer base that care less about the inclusivity. I don't see them going under. I, I honestly would be kind of surprised if they did, but I mean, never say never. Like the, if it could happen to brands like Becca, it could happen to anybody. I'm using the, was this the Sunlit Bronzer and a Panama Sun? 
it could happen to any brand. And I think that's something to always keep in mind too. Like when you're shopping products as consumers, like if you genuinely love a brand, like (laughs) keep buying their stuff because it is, I mean, it's giving people employment. It's supporting your favorite brands. And another aspect I thought was so interesting because she got talking about her brand and and it was just one of those things of like a realization. And, and I think people just need to kind of understand this aspect. I guess she is having just people not happy <laughs> as Canadians that she will not eat the cost of like customs because she's a Canadian and her brand is based out of the U.S. People have a big problem with that. And it's like, that's a part of business. <laughs> It just is. You're going to go where it makes the most sense. You're going to, I mean, because I guess people are looking at her brand as, well, you're just accommodating Americans. It's like, well, they're the, the ones that are buying my stuff. So I need to make a smart business move. Like not everything can just be done for shits and gigs. Like not everything can just be done to appease certain people. Like it's got to be what's best for the business itself. And how I'm looking at this whole ordeal is, This has to be what's best for Estee Lauder. So, I mean, Becca Cosmetics might not be doing insanely well, but they might have another company that's like flourishing right now or an up and coming brand or something like that. So they're going to take this money that they're investing here and they're going to invest it here instead because it's doing better. It's making more money. That's one of the things I'm just like, how don't people get this stuff? Like, uh, that's just to me common sense, but (laughs) it just is what it is. I wonder if Becca is going to have good sales and their products to get rid of products until they close their shops. I I think the desired products, they're just going to sell because like the under eye perfector, I guarantee it's like already hard to find. <laughs> I guarantee. I will say if you find blushes on sale, like first of all, I'm using this palette. This is one of the best face palettes for my complexion. I fucking love this. I even feel like this will work for a variety of skin tones. This is the Jaclyn Hill back when I was like a Jaclyn Hill ride or die. But if you could find the mineral blushes, especially the shade Songbird, highly recommend. That's one of my favorite blushes ever, like of all time. It's so good. But I love this one here too. This was never a permanent one, but it's Rose Spritz. But this is a luminous blush. And it's Gorgina. And then the the cream blush that I used was the LYS Beauty in the shade Confident. And it's also Gorgina. Let's see. Oh my God, I went to my local Sephora yesterday. They got Gucci. Oh, they got a Gucci display. Did they have the powder? I meant to buy the powder yesterday and it sold out on Bergdorf so fucking fast. And they came out with lip liners as well. Ooh, I had such a good customer service from... Eddie Funker House. So now I'm waiting to receive my new foundations. Their customer service has made me want to order again. Who, what is Eddie Funker House? I've never heard of that before. <laughs> John VA. That's common sense. <laughs> exactly. Oh, alter ego. Yes, it was alter ego that I was referring to. Are you stocking up on anything? Not really, just because I don't feel like I really need to. I have like all the products that I really, really loved. My favorite things though... Definitely the bronzers. Let me show you the shade Songbird though, because it's bay. It's so good. Mm, mm, mm. Look at it. This is just my type of blush. I love blushes like this. But even all the blushes, I wish that these were like more of a thing when they did the little highlight blush duos. I love duos like that. I love, especially the packaging. And then another thing Samantha said. <laughs> She was saying this packaging is super expensive. I would love to know, like, just hearing her talk about that stuff, I wish more of that information was easily, like, obtainable because I would just be fascinated to know. But I feel like, really, the only way you're ever going to know is if you, one, know the right people, but then, two, if you actually live through it. Like, I I just feel like that's just going to be what it is. I don't think we'll ever have that accessibility of information. I thought we were going to get that with like the Jeffree Star Shane Dawson series, but that was quickly realized that that's not what we were getting. We were just kind of getting the one side of it, not every aspect of it, which it would be cool to just know more about it. I think that's why that um, 
that documentary on Netflix is really appealing. If they could have had great bases and color range, let's see, they would have a longer longevity. Their bronzers, highlights, and blushes or primers are great. I just think it came down to people were just maybe bored. But I, what makes sense to me the most as a business is Estee Lauder is just noticing like this company is probably costing them too much money and they're going to invest that money elsewhere. It just comes down to a smart business and we're going to have so many more probably makeup brands come out. It's just going to be what it is. Oh, let's see. I'm sorry that Becca is going out of business. However, they have not been innovative or current from when they first launched. I feel like it's got to be so insanely difficult, honestly, though, to be innovative and different in the makeup industry now. What do you guys think? Like, it's like everything's been done. Like, how do you, how do you, <laughs> like, what more can brands do? And then even like the things, like, I'll even notice this myself. I'm like, realistically, things that I get excited about, I'm like, is it really that different though than anything else? Like, if anything, I feel like color stories is the easiest way. But as far as coming out with products, it's like, what else can you do? You know, what else can you do? Maybe they think they've fallen off so much that the best choice is to leave and come back totally new and fresh. That would not surprise me whatsoever. That's smart. That's very, very smart. I would not be surprised. I think, oh, what did, um, six months is a lot of notice that a brand is closing. Is it to boost sales? If so, it worked for me anyway. I love a good conspiracy. I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised at all, especially especially on the heels like we literally just talked about a new face palette <laughs> in Monday's video so it's like I can't say it. nothing fucking surprises me on the internet anymore not a fucking thing nope and then I also find it interesting like how many new brands are coming out right now and then like that's why I was saying earlier I'm like yes like the whole I don't know. It's like, I just don't know if I believe the fact of they're closing their doors because of COVID. Like, especially with having the backing of Estee Lauder. Like, I don't know. To me, it just seems like a smart business move. And I think it's just easy to just give that as a reason. But I will be, I'm, just, I'm very curious to see like what happens after that or after this whole ordeal. You mean the clear foundation didn't save them? That was so bad. But that was like, okay, they tried it. They tried to be innovative. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Sunbird and Flower Child are pretty blushes. Place an order on YSL today. Y LYS. Jesus. LYS Beauty. <laughs> Thanks to your foundation review. I did end up ordering last night a lighter shade. But it's like, that foundation mixed with the Gucci is hot fire. I think it looks so good mixed with the Gucci. But obviously, not everybody's going to want to do that. So I did buy a lighter shade last night. I ended up getting the, I think it's MN3. So I'll keep you guys posted. I'll probably have that in my March favorites and fails. And then I'll have, let's see, February favorites and fails probably next week. Place an order. Oh, I already read that. Your skin has been looking amazing regardless what you wear. Tracy, my skin is just in a really good... I need to, I need to do this every time. Knock on wood. I just think my face is in a really good, good space right now. And it's because of, the, it's because of my skincare. I need to do a skincare video because I know people keep asking for it. It's just my skin's doing well. Which is kind of surprising because... I mean, I'm not really, like, super stressed out, but, like, the bar and everything is moving along, so it's it's getting, like, exciting. <laughs> I don't want to say I'm stressed, because I'm really not stressed right now, but I'm surprised at how long my skin has been in a good place. So that's where I'm like, it has to be the products I'm using. I don't think they carry the powders in the U.S., but I want it really bad, but I refuse to pay overseas shipping. Leticia, are you talking about... What are you talking about? Um... <coughs> Eddie Funker House is an MUA who has his own brand. Shit, I did not know who that was. I'll have to look into that. I said in Sam's chat I could listen to her speak about brand biz for, biz for hours. I 
I would love it if she did that. I, It's like, I get why people don't, though. Because, I mean, it's like, as a business, like, do you want to share all your secrets <laughs> with potential competition? And that was, like, another aspect she got talking about was, because people were saying, well, why doesn't ColourPop do, like, other people's products and stuff like that? And they do. Like, they, I'm pretty sure that ColourPop did make up for um, the Kardashians slash Jenners. They did Tati Beauty. But, I mean, it's like, why would they do that when they they can keep all the money for themselves? <laughs> That's just business. Like, business is not created to, like, be the benefit of other people. It's because you have an idea and you run with it and you capitalize on said idea. Like, the fact that ColourPop did that was so insanely smart because it's, well, why am I going to rely on this lab when I could just do it my damn self? That's smart. It's not ColourPop's fault for being smart. <laughs> Anybody else could do the same damn thing. They just got to make it happen. You know? But yeah, I, I wish she would do like a series on that. That would be everything. Let's see. My thoughts are there's nothing new under the sun. It's all been done. But there are always ways to be innovative without coming up with an entirely new idea. I think that's what makes... I forget what the hell I was watching. And I'm like, I totally agree with this. Somebody had said, I wish I could remember what the source was because I would totally refer you guys to it. Somebody had said like, what makes, I forget even how they worded it, but it was along the lines of you basically take inspiration from a, b a bunch of different things and then you compile them together to create something new. And I think that that was something that's just, yes, like that makes so much sense. Like me opening a bar, for example. That is not an innovative thing. But what makes it innovative is I can look at this aspect. I can look at this aspect. Basically like how Samantha did Auric. Look at we're just plugging the shit out of Auric today and I'm not even using her products. What the hell's up with that? But I think what she did was, okay, like she likes the fact that it's luxury. She was upfront with the fact like this is going to be a luxury brand. Therefore, okay, it's going to be more expensive but she's going to give you packaging. She's going to give you cruelty free. She's like, she's taking all these ideas of what she likes and creating them into her own. That's what makes something different. Cause even though it might be the same, like how I was saying that what she did wasn't necessarily like innovative, but she put her own spin on it. And I think that that is ultimately what companies now, it seems like are lacking in the beauty space. Whereas it's like, if they would just take a little bit more time and listening to the consumers, for the most part, I mean, don't get me wrong. Do I feel that, like, the customer is always right? Hell to the nah. I'm not that person. <laughs> like, nope, sometimes they're wrong. <laughs> sometimes I feel that people are wrong. You're not going to be able to please everybody. But yeah, I just, I just thought she had a really great conversation on her live chat today. And it made me want to chat about this whole ordeal. I, instead of like speculating like what brands that I think are gonna like fall, I would rather speculate about which brands do we foresee now. I'm asking you guys, which brands do you guys see going to flourish going forward? Do you think that brands are actually going to look at this whole aspect and be like, oh, <laughs> maybe let's do something different or like, just overall, like, what's your opinions on that? I think that indie brands are coming so hard. And I'm living for it. I love it. I still love my luxury shit. But I even noticed that, like, I'm happy to give indie my money for those reasons that we talked about earlier. Like, they pay attention. They interact with their consumers and shit like that. You know? I like that. Uh, let's see... It seed the company that owns ColourPop. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, Seed Beauty is ColourPop. <laughs> and they don't, like, so they do the makeup for the companies. But it's like, obviously, they're gonna, their main focus is going to be ColourPop because it's the same, you know? <laughs> Leticia's saying, can I drop a skincare routine, please? I'm going to do it. I'm gonna, Maybe I'll do it. As I'm recovering from my, um, as I'm recovering from my wisdom tooth, 
I'm kind of surprised. Like, I have to be put out for it. So that's tomorrow. It's like this. It's my bottom all the way in the back. Ugh. I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm so looking forward to not having, because it broke through the skin. So I'm, I'm excited to not have food get wedged in there anymore. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> Guys, take care of your fucking teeth. Jeepers. I hear my mom like every single time I go to the doctors. I'm like, she's always like, take care of your teeth. She was always a nutcase about everything with your teeth. Uh, let's see. Indie brands. Oric. Gucci. <laughs> Mo loves that Gucci shit. I think Gucci's on fucking fire though. And it's like, it's interesting because they're luxury. Like, I don't know, like people are so judgy about the price points of luxury, but I'm over here like, I'm fucking here for it. As long as the product's good, I'll give my money to it. I will. I just, I like the luxury aspects, like especially packaging. I'm a packaging snob. Adept for sure. I do agree with that. I think Adept is definitely going to be one that, you know, they're going to, I think they're going to make a come up. I need to turn, hold on. I'm looking very cool. Let's adjust. My light was coming through my window today, so I had to adjust my settings a little bit. I'm choosing to buy less but better for 2021. I feel like that's where I'm at too. Like, I think that's where I'm so quick to just throw my money at Indie. And I don't think that all indie is incredible. I've definitely come across not the best, but it's, I pay attention to like brand aesthetics, like especially like promo shots and stuff. Like if I see a look like this, I'm going to fucking buy it because I think it's going to look very flattering. I'm trying to be mindful about what's going to be flattering on texture. Whereas before I would just buy whatever. I was buying like super colorful eyeshadow palettes, which I still do, but I'm just finding that I don't necessarily love them all. Like, I love and appreciate a colorful color story, but, like, when I bought the Tom Ford Body Heat, I'm like, it looks so fucking basic, but I love it. I love it because it's so basic. Actually, where is that? Is that in my arm's reach? It's not. Where is it? Oh, it's over there. It's with all my palettes for my palette ranking that's coming up. I think the indie brands are going to flourish in 2021. I do get a bit turned off with the pre-order situations, but I completely understand why they do what they do. Exactly. And I think that's an important thing that came from the conversation today was that's why, like, the, what do you want to call it? They do these pre-orders because of the cost that labs are making them buy in the quantities that they're making them buy in. You know what I mean? So like the Adept and Hydrin, like they did, they were very upfront. They're like, there's going to be 2000 pallets. And you know, like people were losing their shit about it because they were upset that they didn't get the pallet. But as a small brand, like that's a huge financial risk that it's like, okay, so what if these pallets don't sell? Then you're fucked. <laughs> You're fucked. Like that could easily, like one mistake, one financial mistake like that could cost you your entire company. Like if you expect something to pop off like that, that'd be like me opening my bar and being like, okay, I think that this bottle is going to sell insanely well. I'm going to buy a shit ton because it's at a decent price. And then if I don't sell any of it, like that could easily put my bar out of business, you know, and that it will just tie up your money in aspects that you don't necessarily want to. I don't know. I really hope that she keeps that video up so I can post it and you guys can watch it because it was a really great conversation and it just gave a little bit more insight to owning a brand and all those things. If you guys can watch it, I highly encourage you to. It just, I think Samantha is just like a super down to earth person. And I think that she has like, she just gives me good vibes. You know, I really just liked how she was talking about everything. Oh, Sydney Grace, 100%. Kaleidos, I definitely think they're coming up as well and adept to getting better over time. And I think that's one thing that I'm choosing to pay attention to. Like even looking at like the Jacqueline Cosmetics situation. At first I was like, there's no fucking way I'm going to buy from them ever again. I could feel myself being like, if they learn, if, if I see actual growth, and if I find something that I actually am like, okay, I like this. I feel like there would be a possibility that I would end up getting it just because like, you can't hold on to shit forever. You know, like as pissed as I was about it and how 
poorly handled I feel it was. It's like, if, I don't know, just like seeing Jacqueline Cosmetics coming to Alta, it's like, there has to be some sort of a game plan there. Like, the fact that Alta is believing in this brand to bringing them to the retailer. I don't know. It's like one of those things I'm just like, maybe something is, maybe something is positive. I'm just, I'm at the point, like, I feel like it improves, like, as I age and just the things that I'm personally subjected to. I'm like, some fights are just not worth it. Some things are just going to be what they are. And it all comes down to, for me, too, I'm just like, you got to respect the hustle. Like, and it, it just comes down to, too, like, if you don't like something, don't fucking buy it. <laughs> if you don't like it, don't fucking buy it. I think luxury brands like Charlotte Tilbury Dior, those brands will never die. I don't think that they will because they're, you know, they might not always produce like the best products, but then it's like they come out with something that's like a banger, it, you know, and I feel like they really have that, um, they just have their demographics, I think, really figured out. You know what I mean? Let's see. The food wedge. I hear you. <laughs> I feel like I'm so far behind. Let me skip down. Adept will blow up if the owner keeps it as her side job. But that's, I mean, you could say the same thing about my YouTube channel. You know, you can, you can have other ambitions in life. Like some people's ambitions, like I'm, I'm, I'm only speaking for myself. Some people's, like me, my ambition in life is to never be like a YouTuber. So it's like, I could give two fucks if my channel blows up tomorrow. Like some people just don't care about it. If it's making you like a content you know, maybe she's content with the amount of money that she's making. And if it's like, if it's working and she can maintain it for the way that it is. I mean, you can't fault somebody for that either. Like not everybody wants to blow up and be a celebrity. Not everybody wants to have like a crazy brand that sold at Sephora. Like some people are just content with having what they have. And if it makes them money and they're able to live comfortably, that's enough for some people. Like not everybody makes a brand to get super, like, rich and loaded. It's just, if it makes you happy and you're content with it, that's enough. Like, I didn't open a bar or buy a bar expecting it to shut down every single bar in the area. It's like, no, I just feel like there's something missing in my town and I want to bring that to the forefront. I don't expect to get super rich. Would it obviously be nice? Yes. But then again, like... That's not everything. Like, money isn't everything. And I think that, I mean, that's always something important to remember, I think, for everybody. <laughs> I think Jacqueline Cosmetics is attached to Morphe more than we know. I think it has a lot of pull with Alta. Oh, I'm sure. But it's like, we'll never know that. So it is what it is. Uh, let's see. We just need to keep reminding ourselves that small indie brands don't have Estee Lauder or Kendo or whatever to catch them if they fall. Completely agree. So when people are like, cancel this brand, cancel this brand, it's like, be careful. Like if it's a brand that you actually like, and if you'd actually be sad, it's, I don't, I don't mean nothing. Like <laughs> you should never wish for anything to be like destroyed or canceled. It's like, it's one thing to keep people accountable, but you could do that without just completely shitting all over them, you know? Oh, I'm like, who's coming in? Hi, Leva. I'm almost done. Can you pause for a minute? No. <laughs> He's like, can you pause for a minute? Can you verify something for me? What? Hold on. Go ahead, man. <laughs> Hi, is this Brittany? Yes, this is. Hold on. Okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. We've got <laughs> a bank trying to validate my information. Oh, my God. I'm like, do we have to do this right now? <laughs> I should have just kept doing my mascara. Whatever. You guys get it. Okay. I forget what we were talking about now that I was rudely interrupted. I'm going to try to...
crop that out in the playback. Let's see. Tart does incredible in stores. It has a whole world of consumers, not on YouTube, that are that do a lot better than we think in our own beauty world bubble. Exactly. I think it's important to remember that too. Like some people are just like, Ooh, I like the product and that's what I'm going to buy. Like <laughs> that sometimes just is what it is. Like, I don't know. I work in a beauty retailer, but we don't carry the Dior backstage line, just the regular line. If anybody asks, Oh, everybody always asks for the backstage. How do we feel about that new powder? Like I keep getting DMS about it too. People are like, I don't understand like what it is. Like what's, what is happening with it? I'm like, it seems like a finishing powder, but <laughs> let's see. You have a real life Brit scandalous. I think I should have went a little lighter on the lashes, but whatever. You get it. I know. Real fucking life, man. The beauty of live streams and the beauty of owning businesses. <laughs> it never, ever stops. And he just got home too. So he wasn't aware that I was... <laughs> <laughs> even doing a video awkward silence I know like leave it to him to always come through I swear it's like every time I sit down these are too long I need to put shorter ones on these are the kiss 01 lashes I'm gonna do the kiss 11s because they're a little shorter but yeah he does that to me all the time I'm just like I just sat down you haven't bothered me all fucking day and the minute I sit down <laughs> you want to do something what the hell I apologize, you guys. It's just real life. That just is what it is. And I'll try to crop that out. What's the what's the time frame that we're on right now? 52 minutes? Okay, I'll have to remember we're on like the 50 minute mark. <laughs> I want the DR powder because it looks cute. Same. Same. Wendy, I love the lashes too. Just for like having such like minimal makeup on. Because like I feel like it always looks like I have. And I the reason I say this is because I've gotten comments like I wear too much makeup. I'm like... I really don't. I really don't feel like I wear, compared to what I used to wear, I really don't feel like I wear nearly the amount of makeup. It's like, it's a very thin layer of makeup that I have on my face. <laughs> They're the Kiss, the, the longer ones, Kiss 01. Oh, yeah, 01s. And then I'm going to put on the Kiss 11s because they're basically the same thing. And then if you guys want a link, just respond in the comments after this video and I can post an affiliate link for you. But um, yeah, these are like my go-tos, especially if you're getting married. Oh yeah. I used to use these when I used to freelance all the time. So they're basically the same. They have the taper. They're super fluttery and wispy. They're basically like Ardell wispies, those other ones. And these are comparable to Ardell demi wispies. Uh, <laughs> they're tickling my forehead for real little long for the look that we got going on today. But if I have something like really intense on my eyes, then I will, um, I will wear those ones. I really like both, but yeah, the O ones are just a little bit too long. I'm here for it. You need to try the styles of beauty lashes. Ooh, I've never heard of those. I really need to get more of my bold face makeup lashes. I used to love their style lashes for days. They were some of my favorite lashes of all time. Mm hmm. Because they were just super, like, super duper thin. Amy Macedo wears them all the time. They're just super thin. And then they just looked so fluttery and, oh, they were so good. Have you tried the Kiss Liner Glow? I have. It's okay. It's not, like, my favorite, but it's okay. I'm rocking with Juvia's Place. This is the Lush Lip Liner. I've worn this for the past three days. Either the bank is like, um, he's trying to use your credit card. <laughs> and we need to verify a couple things. I'm like, can I just do this after? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Such a pain in the ass. Like, when you want a bank to verify shit, they don't. And when you're like, yeah, it's fine, they can't do it. It makes no sense. All right, let's throw it back. Let's do Ofra Cosmetics. This is the Samantha March in the shade story. I don't know if this is available. Is this available still? They've got the best liquid lipstick formula. Has anybody in the chat tried the Pat McGrath, the new Pat McGrath liquid lipsticks? 
I see Mother has another thing coming out too. I don't know what it is yet, but I saw it today. This is such a pretty shade. Good job, Samantha. So cute. <gasps> Judy Z! What's up, girl? I I need to get his lashes. She said Samantha loved the Lunar Beauty lashes. I love the like the friendship that they had. I even have um I even saw him in her live chat today. <laughs> I'm like, they're so cute. And then I want to use the shade Starlight from Lunar Beauty. These just restocked. And I DM'd Manny and was like, now you need to bring back the liquid lipstick and moon prism powders, then we can talk. <laughs> Cause they were the bomb. His glasses are so nice though. They're like a gel consistency. Pretty. So pretty. Love it. Love, love, love it. Hopefully these didn't dry down too far. All right, so let's do the Kiss 11 Lashes. They made Samantha's items permanent. I didn't know that. Oh, that's exciting. My favorite thing was the chiclet blush. It's so, so pretty. And I love how different it looks on so many people. You're getting basically the same look three days in a row. This would be like, if I just got shit to do, I mean, obviously it wouldn't take me as long if I wasn't live, but if I'm just doing like errands or something, but I still want to have like a natural sort of a glam situation, this would be, it'd be all about the skin, making the skin look really nice. I obviously use more products because I wanted to use my Becca stuff. But I mean, especially like we were talking about earlier, if you do see Becca products, especially their powders, if they do happen to go on sale and you're in the market for some, it'd be worth like entertaining. But just know buying it that you're not gonna be able to buy it again. <laughs> Lunar glasses are back in stock. They restocked, I think, last week. Let's see, maybe Pat McGrath. Oh, Pat McGrath cream blush. I would fucking die. <gasps> oh, let's see, Kendi says, nothing too special. Okay, so I don't need to, like, run out. Because I thought that that might be what her new launch is, is more liquid lipsticks. Oh, I hope she does. I would be so interested in that. I'm still eyeing that, like, pinky-toned highlighter, though. I'm still eyeing it. I think, guys, I tried putting a stud back in. I'm so used to seeing the hoop. I don't, I don't love this, I don't think. I used to love a stud, but now I'm like, nope, give me the hoop back. I think it makes my nose look smaller, too, when I wear a hoop. But, guys, other than that... That's all that I wanted to chit chat about today. Look at the skin. The LYS Beauty coming through on the cheek. Got that Becca highlight. I do think that this accentuates a little bit of texture. I think that there's other highlights that I have that I like more. But if I were to say one thing that I wish made a comeback from, from Becca, it was a palette like this. Because I thought this was fire. I still, like every time I travel, I take this with me because I think it's so beautiful. But... Actually, you know what? I did put a powder highlight, so it could be a mixture of the powder highlight and the cream. Pull in the texture a little bit there, but I just threw the bronzer on the lids, and that was it. Estee just invested millions into Decium, the Ordinary. It was announced yesterday, so that's why they caught Becca. I wouldn't be surprised. It's smart business. Did we discuss Nomad? I thought about it, but I don't, I still don't know enough about that. Like I was trying to figure out that whole situation because I did end up buying the Shanghai palette. I bought it the day after that it launched and then it was like everything kicked off and I'm like, I don't, I don't know enough about it. So that's why I didn't talk about it today. If you guys have feedback, if you guys want to still chat, I'll, I'll hang because I want to see what you guys have to say about it because I've seen so, this is a problem with the internet. Is there so much information? <laughs> and it's like some things I'm just like, I don't get it. And then other things I'm like, yes, that's valid. But I didn't, I I mean, I have the palette. I think the packaging is so fucking cute. Hold on. We're talking about this palette. The new Shanghai, but this was pulled. This was pulled from their website, so you can't buy this anymore. But in the event that you wanted to see, this is what the palette looks like. I, I was so excited to try this new formula. And then this is the other side. 
I'm so sad because I'm like, I, I want to look into it more. It's just there's so much information. So much. Becca didn't release anything interesting the last two years. It wasn't expected. <laughs> they pulled the palette. There was 160 on the live, but only 85 likes. We need to come through for our girl, Britt. Heather coming through. What happened with Nomad? I think that's more or less what I'm still like, because they didn't really come out and say quite yet what actually was going on from what I'm gathering is people are offended by this palette. And I'm not really completely sure why. It's something to do with the theme of the palette being it's a Shanghai palette. It seems to me like it's the yin and yang reference, but I don't understand that just because it's not something that directly affects me. So I've been trying to look into different Instagram accounts that are talking about it and stuff like that, but I'm still like, I'm trying to understand it more because at first I saw that they were donating 10%, I think of the proceeds to a charity. And then I think a couple days went by and then they pulled the palette. So they're no longer even selling it. So I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to I think they're trying, they're making a d good decision to focus more on the nature of their destinations. The yin and yang, I think was found offensive. Uh, was it, was it a cultural appropriation thing? Yeah, that's where I'm like, I'm not really sure. There's nothing that like flat out explains it without like spending so much time looking into it. Like I've been working the past couple days, so I haven't been able to really look into it at all. Uh, let's see what you guys are saying. My friends were offended by Nomad. After speaking to them, they just decided not to support them. Uh, I had no idea I was going to get it today. Not to, oh, they decided not to support Nomad. But it's travel-based and I'm just not seeing the offense in my honest opinion. That was kind of where I stood at first and I'm like, when they mentioned, like when I had started seeing the yin and yang reference, I'm like, okay, that's something I have totally no knowledge about. So that's where I was trying to look into it more, but there's so much. And then when it's like, you feel like you're getting somewhere, it directs you somewhere else. So I'm like, I, if somebody really could elaborate for me, I would really appreciate it. But like, I'm trying to look into it, but it's just one of those things. I'm like, I need to know that these guys are nomad. Let's see something with the cultural appropriation and the other palette, the Orient. And also having controversy. I remember hearing about that, but I wasn't familiar with Nomad back then. With the, or I think it was the Orient, Oriental Express palette. The only thing that I can go by is my experience with Nomad. And I've always had great experiences. They seem very nice. And they send these cards with, because I mean, they are, they're travel themed. And it just says... Like, cause on this card, I'm like, okay, exploring Shanghai. We kept feeling the sense of yin yang. And that's where I'm like, I don't, I don't know what that means. But then it says the Chinese philosophy of opposite and contrary forces being complementary and interconnected. We saw it in the city's layout of the ancient, pro ancient, oh, pagodas across the river from neon lights of the future. And it felt like, and it felt in its diverse culture of the Eastern values with Western influences. For us, Shanghai is a city that embodies yin yang as it looks to the future without forgetting the past. The palette is, let's see, the new color story and layout inspired by Shanghai and dualism of yin yang. Left represents yin and historic Shanghai with a softer, cooler, muted shades and plush matte finish. Right is the yang and futuristic Shanghai with a bolder, warmer, vibrant shades and the new brilliant foil finish. And to complete the balance, both sides include a contrary yet complementary center yin yang shade. So when I read this, I'm like, I think people have a problem with Nomad being, because I've seen a few different arguments. Like, I think that people just don't like the brand and the fact that they're people that don't wear makeup. And then I've seen that they travel. But then I was like, okay, it feels to me like the yin yang is the real issue here. So that's the aspect of it that I'm trying to look into more. Uh, let's see. It's their travels and their perspective. And I think that's where I, I'm kind of caught where I'm just like, I don't know, because I kept feeling like I saw like the palette doesn't represent Shanghai. And I'm like, well, that's like obviously from a Shanghai, like if people live there, that's going to be their perspective is when you look at it. But I think... Where I see the brand, I'm just like, it feels like they just kind of use their travels as their inspiration and then they create the color stories based on 
that I don't but again it's not something that I will be offended by because it doesn't affect me I think it's just one of those things we have to listen to the people that are saying that this is the problem with it it's just I'm like I bought the palette because I thought it was pretty I wanted to try their new formula. I think the owners are really nice. And that's the only aspect that I can have. But I would just say, like, listen to people that have wanted to talk about it and express their concerns with it. But I wouldn't go out there and be like, don't buy from Nomad because of this. It's just, I mean, them pulling the palette, I think it still isn't good enough for some people. And I don't think that, I think it's just getting really hard for brands to win because no matter what you do, nothing's going to be good enough. So, I mean, I think people are seeing it like they had issues with Oriental Express, which I know nothing about. And then they're having issues with this one. I think it's just like a compilation of things. So I think it's just one thing, like pay attention to it. But if you want to buy their products, buy them. If you don't, then don't. It's just going to be wherever you stand on it. Oh, let's see. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Were Japanese people offended by the Tokyo Palette? I have no idea. No, no idea. They need to keep it simple, like a dot. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. It's just one of those things. Um, I mean, I don't know the background story for or details, but what about the BH Travel Series? I don't know. It's just, it's a really difficult thing to understand as, for everybody. No controversy with the Iceland palette, so I'm not fully understanding it. Culture appreciation. Cultural appropriation is used wrong all the time. And I don't think that that means it's right. It's just, if we're going to, if we're going to hold one brand accountable, we need to hold everyone accountable. It's just one of those things that everything can offend anyone. Like me saying fuck will offend somebody. I'm not going to apologize for that. Granted, I know it's not the same thing, but it's just, if somebody is offended, you should listen to it. And if you agree with it, you agree with it. And if you don't, you don't. That's just the reality of the world that we live in. Not everybody is going to see things all the same. That's just not realistic. I don't think they were trying to upset anyone, but I also think they might, oh, maybe should have asked maybe their input when it comes to something a cultural feels is sacred. And from what I understand is they did work. I mean, their products are made in China and they have worked with people from the areas that they've traveled as far as I'm aware, but I don't feel like, I don't feel like that's been conveyed enough either. I just remember seeing it, but I think, I think it was from Nomad's story where they said that they like worked with people, like worked with the locals to create their palettes. I think, but I could be wrong there. I would suggest looking into it because I could be reiterating this incorrectly. That's just like the, that's the, message that I took from it was they work with people from the areas that they've traveled to kind of inspire their palettes. I have seen, let's see, I have seen yin yang as well as a travel issue as well. I mean, people are allowed to travel and then take in destinations and interpret it as their own. So I'm a bit confused. And that's kind of where I was like, I think it's just a compilation of things like that just make people not like the brand. And that's fine. You don't have to buy it. <laughs> you don't have to buy it. If you feel that it's something that did offend you, express those feelings and that's like there's plenty of things out there that could offend so many different people so I don't know it's it's a really difficult place I don't care but I am <laughs> I don't care but I am a live and let live kind of person same the Iceland palette was strictly about the environment travel same as the BH palettes yeah that's where that's where like the more that I looked into it, I felt like the yin yang was the biggest issue, but I feel like that needs to be the big issue. Like the, 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 the point of them just being people that travel and they're entitled, that's not a valid argument for me. Like that's, that has nothing to do with anything. It's just one of those things like, if you have a valid, like a valid argument, don't negate it by bringing up something dumb because sure they're white people and they travel. That's not their, I mean, that's their luxury. You can't hate on people just because they like to travel. I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's, that's where I was at with it. Uh, maybe it'll be easier just to name the shades after maybe landmarks or something. That's kind of what it seems like, but 
I mean, hopefully they just learn from it. And like I said, I'm still trying to learn more about it. Maybe the more that I look into it, but it's like, I was going to do a video on this. I'm not going to now because I don't know enough about it and I would like to know more about it. So I'm going to spend my time doing that. I'll still use it. I bought it and keep it in my collection, but I'm not going to do like a dedicated video to it. And you know what? I'm just going to look at it. Like I hope that they learn something and it's a learning experience for everybody to be mindful of just different things. But then again, I also have the mindset of everything can offend anyone. So yeah, it's just a bunch of different things. And I wish, I wish there was kind of more as far as I wish I didn't have to dig so deep into it to understand it, but sometimes that just is the way that it is. People need to know the culture before they call it appropriation. Like how do, oh, like how people do, I didn't, I didn't hear anything about that. Like with her native palette. And that's kind of where I feel like we are is like, everything is going to be so picked apart now. Like it just, I don't know. I think cultural appropriation is different than culture Cultural appreciation. I like that outlook on it. That's like Hourglass. Their products are for medium light skin tones, not dark people throw a fit. I think, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. I remember years ago, Mac did a Native American inspired collection and almost immediately had to pull it after they released because people were offended by its cultural appreciation. Okay. Like this is, this is only something that I've had because I only had like a cultural appropriation moment when I posted a TikTok that was, you guys probably all saw it if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, it was the a daily reminder that you're the baddest bitch on the block, not on my block though, but on your block for show. Somebody was like, what's up with the cultural appropriation? I'm like, I'm literally supporting this person by using their shit on my video and tag them because it shows like where the sound source came from I don't know, like that was the aspect of it. I'm like, I'm literally doing what everybody else does, but because I'm a white person, it was different. So that's where I'm just like, some of the things, it just comes down to you're not gonna be able to please everybody. And I just, like I said, with the whole like nomad thing, I want to know more about it, but I also don't wanna keep reading about how they're white people that travel because that's just not, I don't feel like that's really what it's about. I think that there's a deeper conversation and that's more of what I would rather pay my attention to, if that makes sense. Well, let's see. I honestly think Nomad is trying to showcase a location and a culture. Yeah, and I, I mean, obviously we're gonna see it differently because we're not in Shanghai. Like I wanna, pe I wanna hear from people that are from Shanghai that are offended by it. I don't wanna hear, you know, about it from really anybody else other than that, just because like, to me, it's like, that's who we should listen to are people that are offended from Shanghai or if they're from there or something like that. Like, I feel like there's a lot of people that can weigh in on it that just really have no room to. And that's just one of those things. It's like, I don't know. That's, I guess, just another aspect that I've learned as I've grown and learned from mistakes that I've made in my life. Like I've talked about things that I really have no room to talk about but I learned from that and I'm like, okay, maybe I just need to shut the fuck up and let people that are affected by it speak for it. So, I mean, I like the fact that I was able to showcase the fact that they were having, like that this was pulled off the shelf. If you want to look more into it, the sources are out there, but I just, from my experience, you're going to have to really look into it because there's just layers upon layers upon IG stories and everything. It's like, it's a lot. You can't win them all. For real. You really can't. <laughs> Lauren, I know. Don't let people on TikTok teach you about your social interactions. That's how I felt, but I'm like, what the fuck ever, man. <laughs> I just can't. I just don't have any tolerance for bullshit anymore because I've been through enough shit. I'm just like, I can't. I cannot fucking deal anymore. I thought all New Yorkers spoke that way. <laughs> Oh, I think that was when it gets out of the control. Some people are just using cultural appropriation as an excuse to create drama. If there is someone from the actual culture having an issue, then let's have a conversation. And I feel like that's another thing like you really need to pay attention to is learn how to communicate with one another. Like if you have a problem with something, you need to communicate said problem. That's it. <laughs> it's not that difficult. 
Jen Love spoke about it on What's Up in Makeup. I mean, did she elaborate on... Maybe I'll have to check that out, but then again, that's... I guess I just want to hear it from a different source. Like, I want to hear it from the sources themselves. You know what I mean? Just hopping in, but I think it's going to be really cool to see what they do next. They said they were going to focus on nature and animals, kind of like conservation themes. I think that's great. I think that's great, too, and that's just like, okay, if they... You know what? If they create a new palette and the color story speaks to you, I mean, they don't strike. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to intentionally strike anyone as like a piece of shit person, but it's like, it seems like they're learning from it. I'm sure they took a hit with pulling this off the shelf. Does that make it right? No. The only thing you could do is watch how they do and move forward from it. You can't hold somebody's feet. Like even just the fact that I'm like, listen, and I think this just comes with just personal experiences, getting older, just being more open to things. Even for me to sit here and be like, you know what? Maybe in the future I would consider Jaclyn Cosmetics if I really saw growth. If I really saw a change, I would consider it. But if I still see the same repetitive characteristics that I've seen previously, then no, I'm not going to. But that's a decision that I make for myself. I'm not going to encourage you guys, don't buy this, don't buy this, buy this, buy this. I show you the shit that I'm interested in. I talk about the brands that I'm interested in. We talk about new makeup releases every single Monday. And that's ultimately just what it's about for me. I'm here to talk about makeup and share makeup. I don't know. Girl, I just refuse to let people label races and what they're allowed to do. I got beautiful mixed family and you learn what not you have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, a lot of Chinese were in IG comments under the pic stating their opinions with no... Oh, and Nomad deleted the picture. I think they deleted like the whole entire existence. But I think that that's where I had seen like a lot of the... Um, unpopular opinions with the brand itself was with in those comments. So I think like, I think there's a fine line of being like genuinely upset or wanting to communicate and just wanting to bitch about something. That's what I feel like I kept seeing. I'm like, okay, the fact that they have a travel theme brand, like not everybody's going to love that, but that's not something to really come for a brand over. I don't know. <laughs> Deidre. I could say that with any brand though, because I'm just like, you know what? If I like it, it is what it is. I'm not going to hold a fucking grudge for my whole entire life. We as white people do not have a place to state whether the pal- Yeah, exact, And that's exactly where I'm at. I'm like, look into it. It, It's not something that affected me, so I can't say shit. I'm trying to figure it out for myself, but I'm not the source that you want to listen to on why people were offended by it. You need to listen to the people that were offended by it. Um, I always liked Brene Brown's stance on issues like this. I'm not here to be right. I'm here. To, I'm here to get it right. I like that stance. I'm really fine, far behind watching, <laughs> watching double the catch up. <laughs> it's up to us as individuals to make an informed decision, but it's relative and personal. Yes, definitely agree. And it's just, I think we also need to look at it like let people make their decisions and not try to convince them that they made the wrong ones. Cause I think that's another, like people could be like, I can't believe you bought the Nomad palette. It's like, first of all, how could I have known for one, but for two, it's like, what am I supposed to do? Throw it away. Is that going to make you feel better? They pulled it off the shelves. Like what? I mean, they've apologized. They donated proceeds. They pulled it from the shelves. Like, but it's, it seems like that's still not enough. And that's where it's like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. It's, trust me, it's happened to me plenty of times in life. And there just comes to a point where you have to be confident in your decision and own it and just move forward and learn from it. And that's all that you can do as a fucking human. And if people want to hate me for the rest of my life for shit that I did, God, however long ago, even if I did something last week, if people want to hate me for it, everybody's entitled to that decision. You can make your own decision. If you decide after this video, you don't like me or like this brand or whatever, you're entitled to that. <laughs> oh, let's see. A couple more. Uh, let's see. I said, if we canceled all brands that had controversy, there would be none left. Yup. Cause I think one thing it is to remember <laughs> There's no such thing as bad publicity. There's really not. There's really not. On a ser it's not that serious life's too short to be getting all bent up over makeup, right? I mean, some things there is valid, like 
there are valid arguments out there. Like, I don't doubt that the yin yang, I don't doubt that that's a very valid argument. It's just, I need to understand more about it. So that's where I'll take my time and look into it. I do think that there are certain things that you're just like, okay, it does matter. But I also don't need to feel the need to come on here and be like, guys, you shouldn't buy this because of the, like, I don't feel the need to do that. It's, I'll pay attention to my damn self and educating myself. And that ultimately is all that you can do. Oh, let's see. Misery loves company and they're just trying to get you to join in. Uh, they did way more than many others with major scandals attached to them <laughs> or their brand. <laughs> oh, I love our opinions, guys. The bat palette has me uninspired. I don't dig bat. All right, guys, I see there's 135 people watching. If you guys like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up or thumbs down. If you didn't like it, I'm good with that too. Always keep in mind, this is a fun place to just chit chat bullshit and talk about new makeup products. And everybody learns every day. Everybody just shit happens every day, man. I'm still, I'm like, I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised about Becca. But at the same time, it's also, I don't know. It's made me just think like, support the brands that I genuinely love and hope I mean you never like to see a brand fail you never like to see that it's always a shitty thing and I mean do I think this is the end of all brands though no I mean there's definitely gonna be brands that are lost along the way but that doesn't mean it's not for a bad reason like who knows maybe Becca going under will bring out another a more amazing brand like you know when like another or when, it, when one door closes, another door opens kind of a thing. I think that's just the mental aspect that I have when it comes to that sort of thing. Many countries rely on tourism revenue and Nomad was basically advertising for them. Are these people going to cancel every non-Asian person? Yeah, like I'm just going to keep looking into it. That's all that I can do. Uh, they're only indie I know of with major scandal. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they're... Just give them time. Give them all time. I'm sure because... Somebody can always be offended by something. But other than that, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy today's little get ready with me. Make sure you guys check out my video yesterday of LYS Beauty. They're a new clean beauty brand at Sephora and they're black owned. Their products were incredible. I think that this fucking blush, I can't get enough of it. I think it's so pretty. Becca will be very missed by me, but I'm also excited to see what else this lovely community has us has to offer us. So other than that, I will be out of commission for at least a few days, so I don't know exactly when I'll be back. I'm pegging for Monday for new makeup releases, but if I'm feeling better, you'll see me. I would love to do, I need to do an empties video coming up. I need to do a skincare recommendations, but definitely coming up will be makeup releases, new makeup releases, and favorites and fails will be coming up in like a week or so, probably the last day of February. So stay tuned, subscribe if you're new. And I will see you guys in my next one. Okay, bye.